Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. Savior's Church, Old Greenwich. Whether you're here in person or joining us via Zoom from near or from far or on YouTube at the distance of time, welcome. I note our readers today are Jordan Silva, who will be reading via Zoom, uh, the first reading in Psalm, and Diane Montgomery will be reading the epistle from here at the lectern. Our first hymn, led by the choir of Guildford Cathedral, Earth Has Many a Noble City, hymn 127, hymn 127. Our service continues with the opening acclamation found on page or found in your leaflet. Alleluia, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Alleluia. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that thy people, illumined by thy word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, and that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson, which is read from the Silva household. In those days... A reading from Isaiah chapter 62, beginning at the first verse. In those days, said the prophet, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married for the Lord delights in you and your land and shall be married. For as a young man where marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you like to lead us in the psalm, or would someone from the Silva household like to do that, or should we do that from here? Sorry about that. I thought we were only on board for the first reading. I'll jump in. <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay. 
Psalm 36 verses 5 through 10 will read responsively, divided at the half verse by the asterisk. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. And your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people, your people, people take refuge people. under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them, you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life. And in, and in your light, we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Brethren, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were heathen, you were led astray to dumb idols. However, you may have been moved. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And but it is the same God who inspires everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are inspired by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn, number 509. Spirit divine, attend our prayers. We will sing verses one and two before and verses four and five after the gospel. At that time, on, on the third day, there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now six stone jars were standing there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the steward of the feast. So they took it. When the steward of the feast tasted the water now become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first. And when men have drunk freely, then the poor wine but you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
from today's closing hymn. In Christ, all races meet, their ancient feuds forgetting, the whole round world complete from sunrise to its setting. When Christ is throned as Lord, men shall forsake their fear to plowshare beat the sword, to pruning hook the spear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And pl please forgive the Zoom. What happened was I said yes. When little things pop up in your screen, just say no. Uh, and my iPad reclaimed the host and destroyed the sound uh, coming from the computer. And it would just take far too long to figure out. So the rest of the service will be without music. I apologize for my imperfection. And yet, it's our imperfection that we are so reluctant to acknowledge. Jokingly, as we passed by a church in June, my co-passenger in a car said, a church has a flag out that says, this month is Pride Month. And someone said, what, what next is next month? Will it be anger, sloth? Will it be, which deadly sin will they celebrate next month? Of course, this was turning it on its end because it wasn't meant to be something bad, yet it was meant to be something quite good. And yet, if we lead with pride as a good thing, and I'm not talking about the June celebration at all, I'm actually using this as a brain teaser for ourselves, we think of pride as good as when I said to my son who just moved to Denver with his company to a new job, son, I am so proud of you. And yet, in my own heart, I'm thinking, am I committing the root of all sins by being proud of my son. I'm gonna hold that over here for a moment. We'll pick that up in Lent when we deal with the deadly sins. And just talk about our ability to acknowledge our own imperfection. In today's gospel, I wanna focus on one item, the stone jars. We have the familiar gospel story, one of the three gospel stories that is associated with Epiphany. One, of course, is the baptism of Christ in the River Jordan. The other is the visiting of the Magi. And the third is the first miracle at Cana of Galilee, turning water into wine. And those three stone jars, so look at the three stone jars. They would appear to a casual observer at the feast simply to be jars of spare wine. To the waiters who fetched them, they knew them to be empty. To the steward to whom were brought the stone jars after Jesus had them filled, they knew what was going on. They knew they had been filled with water. And to the wedding guest, they knew because they experienced, because they tasted, that it was filled with wine and not the dregs that were usually served at the end of a wedding feast, but the good stuff that is usually served first. So often we look at something and have no idea what it really is or what's inside it. We have no idea whether 
something is of God's will or not? Am I saying it's God's will because it's mine? Am I saying it's God's will because I like it? Am I defending myself by saying this must be God's will? I don't know. But someone who has introspection, someone who has humility, can find a way into it. And I'm not holding myself up as an example, but I want to give you an example. On this weekend, in this month when we mark the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, I want to note my own struggle with with what we call racism. This could be a three-hour lecture, and I'm not going to give it all to you. But I'm going to share one aspect of it, and that is to say, I, I actually only know a few people, I do know a few, who would say I am a racist. Most people say I'm not a racist. Whether they are or not, it's not something you generally self-acknowledge. And I certainly fall into the category of one who says I am not, because it's a terrible thing to be, society tells us. It's a terrible thing to be I believe scripture tells us, though, has it always? Well, huh. In the Diocese of Connecticut, a resolution at convention a couple of years ago challenged each parish to examine its history and examine its relationship with slavery. Did the parish own slaves? Many did. Was the parish church built with slave labor? Many were. Ah, said the priest in charge of St. Saviors, we're exempt. We were built in the 1920s. We don't have to worry about that. Check. Who knew what was in the stone jar? I'm not revealing something about St. Saviors. I'm saying, check. The stone jar is up on the shelf. We don't know what's in it. But I said, check, and we haven't looked. Perhaps we should. We should. But what about my stone jar? Many of you have heard me tell the story about being in sixth grade and my encounter, first encounter consciously with systemic racism. I'll share it with you another time if you haven't. I want to share with you something I encountered of historic. Racism, yeah, but it's looked at through 21st century eyes. As I've become older and my older friends have died, I've been asked to fill their places as chaplain in a number of historical organizations uh, in this region. And if you're not familiar with them, there are dozens uh, scores of organizations that commemorate the history of our country, uh, the history of people who immigrated to this part of the world a long, long time ago. In order to join them, you need to trace your ancestry back to folks who landed here before a certain date and did certain stuff. And they've asked me to be chaplain of a couple of these organizations as the old chaplain dies. As I was researching my ancestors for one such organization, I came across the United States Census in the 18th and 19th centuries and found a box. How many are in your household? How many whites? And this is in New England. How many white males? How many white females? How many 
slaves. There was actually a column for it. And when I was researching, I felt pride, and I use that word in all its senses, that in none of the ancestors of mine that I was looking at did I see a checkbox or a number under the slave box. When I get off the pride and put on the humility, looking around at the rest of the census, I acknowledge freely it's probably because we were too poor. It's probably because others had more money and could afford slaves. Much of Connecticut, much of Massachusetts were built with the labor of slaves. And I say this in humility and with a sense of historic shame. It was the equivalent of owning a tractor today. Churches own lawnmowers today. In the 18th century, they owned slaves. It sounds horrible to say today, it was the stuff of vestry minutes in the 18th century. Pride cometh before what? Buffall. It cometh before a fall. It cameth before my fall, as just this past week in another organization, I looked not at a certain ancestor, but at his grandfather. And as I looked at the settlement of his estate in 1738, one John Webb, it listed his possessions. And this John Webb was not a poor man. His occupation was listed as gentleman. The entirety of his estate was listed at approximately 3,000 pounds, which was a lot of money then. If you look at the 1960s, when a very well-off man made $10,000 a year, imagine the 1730s, someone's estate being 3,500 pounds. That was a lot of money. I haven't done the conversion. Someone can do that and tell me how much that is in today's money. Of that, they itemized it. 2,500 was the value of his land. This is up in Yarmouth, Massachusetts. 500 were personal. It just said personal. And on the one hand, I might say that was pride. I'm proud of him. Well done. You got to the new world and you did well in just a hundred short years in your family. And then at the bottom of the page, it said, and one Indian girl, three pounds, 10 shillings. His possessions were $2,500 in land, $500 of other stuff, and three pounds, 10 shillings worth of an Indian girl. One tenth of 1% of his estate. The value of a human life. This churchman, this pillar of his community. We can explain it by saying times were different. We can explain it by saying we would have done differently. I think that lets us off the hook. What can we do? We can wrestle with it.
we can ask ourselves the tough questions. If John Sears, I may have said John Webb earlier, it was John Sears, an upstanding member of his community, member of his church, we have records of his baptism, owned a human life valued at three pounds, 10 shillings. And far from being ashamed of it, left it in his estate to his heirs. Clearly, it, he didn't feel that it was a contradiction to his Christian faith. Clearly, he felt it was consistent with it. Clearly, this was part of the and parcel of the morals of the day, the ethics of the day, the state and church reality of New England. What today? might be in the stone jar we see in front of us that seems absolutely fine, seems good. What will they be looking at 270 years from now and say, can you believe that Ian Montgomery did that, owned that? What are they going to say that you were up to, that you seemed proud of, that you have no problem with now and can't see now. I have no idea. That's the problem. That's the challenge. What's the answer? The answer isn't in pride. It's quite the opposite. It's in humility. It's in not standing up and saying, look at me. It's in not saying I have all the answers. It's in saying I have very few of the answers. It's in kneeling. It's in looking up at that cross and saying, there are the answers. It's in offering myself in humility, in emulation of the one who who brought light to the world, the one who set the prisoners free, the one in whom meet East and West. The one in Christ, all races meet. Their ancient feuds forgetting the whole round world complete from sunrise to its setting. When Christ is throned as Lord, men shall forsake their fear to plowshare beat the sword, to pruning hook the spear. May, may, may we embrace the simplicity of the stone jar and may in doing so, we drink deeply from the good wine, the blood of Christ, the author of our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Beloved, greet one another in the name of the Lord. Please be seated. And hello to uh, the folks we see online, uh, McCollins, uh, Christopher Schuyler, and the Lee family, the Graham, Susanna Graham, the Silva family, the Wrights, and all others who may be joining us on YouTube and Facebook. As you will have read in the email, if you're on our email list, and if you're not, please simply contact the office or me, and we'll get you on the email list. Uh, I will be absent from the parish for a little over a week, beginning tomorrow. Uh, Pam Strobel, who was with you this summer for a couple of weeks, will be taking call, pastoral call for me, and her cell phone number is in the email. If you run into any sort of pastoral emergency, she will be happy to help you. Father Stephen Nagy, who is a relatively new priest of the Diocese of Connecticut, um, will be joining you for worship next Sunday. And this is a good dry run for it. It won't be um, uh, with music. It will be simple. Uh, Colin, you seem to be sharing your screen with the whole group, which is somewhat blocking things. If, uh, Sorry. <laughs> it's quite all right. But if you want to share something, that's cool too. No. <laughs> uh, no, no problem. No problem. Uh, my cat does that frequently during meetings. Um, and I look forward to seeing you two weeks from today, 2330, which will be the occasion of our annual parish meeting in which we will be electing a slate of officers and representatives to the vestry and diocesan convention and all that good stuff. Uh, you'll receive a, a specific notification of that. It's posted on the door in various other ways in advance of the meeting, as well as some reports once those are finalized by some of the officers. I finished mine and the others will join them and then those will be sent out in advance of the meeting by email. Does anyone have any announcements uh, either here or elsewhere? If you, if you do have an announcement, I can't quite see everyone, so simply say so. Hearing none, I, I want to th thank young Silva for reading today. I'm afraid I, I don't, I haven't been around you enough to know your first name. Could you tell me what it is? Harrison. You're Harrison, thank you. Because of COVID, we haven't been in the same room very much. I think, but I'm really looking forward to a time when we can be. And I mentioned to your mother that it'd be really great if you wanted to read. And I'm really glad that you did today. I want to thank you. Okay. And maybe Bennett could read sometime. Yeah. That would be great too. Thank you both <laughs> for joining worship today. It's really great to see both of you. Hope school's going well. And we'll look forward to talking afterwards. Thanks, guys. May we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
This Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory and praise of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and for the special intentions which each of us brings to this altar this day and holds in our hearts and in our minds, praying especially for, in the prayer which our Lord himself offered, ut unum sint, that they all may be one, that the unity which exists between Christ and his Father might truly exist between all the members of his body on earth. We pray with the wider Anglican communion for the province of Nigeria, the most reverend Henry Dukuba, their bishop and primate, with the wider diocese of Connecticut for all ecumenical and interfaith endeavors involving our congregations and people for peace and peacemakers. In our parish, we pray particularly for the next people to walk through our doors or through our digital portals. We pray for parishioners, Michelle, Bruce, Clay, Marissa, and Nicole Graham, for Suzanne Graham, for Stella and Robert Manorino, for Antoinette Prudhomme and Anthony, Ava and Alana Pulaski, for Antonia Swartz, for Michael, Andrew, Chloe, and Catherine Strom. We pray for the faithful departed, particularly Robert Wright, priest. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, thieves thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, may be in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Having presented our oblations unto thee, O Lord, in remembrance of the manifestation of thy newborn son, and having beseeched thee that he is the author of our gifts, so he may also mercifully receive the same, we beseech thee now to prevent us with thy heavenly grace and light, that we may discern with a pure mind and receive with due devotion the mystery of which thou hast willed us to be partakers. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth God throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Depart in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.